In this video, I'll be showing how to create a camera system that can be seen in some games with platforming. The camera will follow the character like they generally do in a third person game, but it will follow the character's vertical movement only when it lands on a new platform. So here we are inside the level. Um, as you can see, I just created a uh, test up so you can just jump around and see how it works. So I have the default uh, third person uh, character here, the one you get from the Unreal Engine uh, third person project template. So as you can see here, when I'm jumping, the spring arm is following the height value, the Z value of the character. So whenever I'm jumping, the character moves along uh, with it. So if I'm jumping, as you can see here, it's always following me at a certain with a certain offset like so and i have a character here just to differentiate it from uh the default character i have it wearing a red hat cap uh you pretty you pretty much know where it's from so here you can see as i'm jumping the camera doesn't follow uh the height of the character so even if he's jumping around uh the camera stationary however when it's moving on the horizontal plane the x and y values uh changing the camera follows too with a slight uh interpolation it's not a hard snap to the character so here and then if i go to a higher platform it starts following the ca uh, character to adjust to its height so we have this set up and let's see how we can create this so first for this setup we're going to need to create four new things we're going to need a new game mode so create your new game mode then create your own controller and also player character manager uh, you can all get these from here by right clicking in the content browser blueprint uh, you can just create a player controller like so and then just name it whatever you want and also for the game mode and player camera manager also you can look it up here let's say the player camera manager so you inherit this create it and name it whatever you want after that's set go inside the player control you created Inside here, you can see player camera manager class. I've changed nothing apart from that. Just uh, make it reference the camera manager you control. Uh, you created. I named my player camera manager camera height control. Uh, make uh, set this value as the camera manager you created. And then here in the player camera height control, uh, I don't I don't really change much, but to make this uh work i just created i just modified some values here uh you don't i i mean you can forget about this actually your yeah, aspect ratio you don't need to change so here uh if you go down a bit or you can just search for pitch these values are by default nine minus 90 and 90 but just for this uh Right now, just change it up to uh, minus 70 and minus 3. Uh, this is to clamp the pitch of the camera. So in here, you can see the camera doesn't go over. Even if I'm trying to move upwards, it doesn't go over the character. And if I don't set it to minus 3, it would go through underneath the floor. And having it minus 3, it's just kind of stops it here. Uh, if you just want to just for the showcasing if i set it to minus 20 let's say you can see the camera is much higher they set it to minus uh, 60 not 65 minus 65 uh yep it, go, it goes wonky so here let's set it to minus three and later on after you've implemented you've uh, followed this video and uh, set it up by yourself for yourself then you can uh mess around with these values and see how it works 
uh, we'll you'll see why we were using this values later. And then uh, we got the game mode. Uh, we need to use go inside the game mode, and then here set the player controller to uh, the controller you just created. And the class, uh, we also want to be off of. You probably have your own character, uh, or the character you're working with. So just make it reference the character you're working with. So just to go from the top again, you have your game mode. Uh, set the default pawn class as your character, and default player class, a uh, controller class as the controller you just created. And then inside the controller. Set the player camera manager class as the camera manager you just created. And then inside the player camera manager, uh, set the pitch values to minus 70 to minus 3. And then later on, you can uh, figure out the values that you like. And then we are going to need to create a BP camera. So this is going to be the actor that works as your camera. So just go here. Actor class, a blueprint class, and just create an actor. And then once you have it, have it set up, just close the other tabs here. Uh, so I have a billboard here just so I can see it inside the world, but you don't really need the billboard. Just add a spring arm and a camera. And then uh, place it inside the world somewhere. And then that's pretty much it. And um, after you set the uh, spring arm and camera, not much to touch. I think I didn't touch anything at all, except the target arm length and the collision test. But these are uh, some things that you can work with later on. But as of now, I'm just focusing on the movement and the rotation of the spring arm. So. You don't really have to touch anything. You just add the components and you're pretty much good to go. And here, create three variables. One should be the character you created, or I, while I set this up, I have it. Actually, I think you can just set it as a character. You can just set it as a character or if you have some specific um, uh, functions or variables or something inside your own custom character that inherits character then you want to set it as your character but i think this is in this system you can just set it let's just change it up right here it should still work yep and then you have a floor check distance which is a float value a vector uh, variable called last impact point so in the camera here we're just going to have one thing going on which is on tick and we're just gonna call it a custom event or just spring arm uh, and then we wanted to work you know we need to have a following character obviously so if we don't have it we don't do anything if we have a character to follow we uh, I have it as a sequence just to see it more easily, but yeah, you can just uh, connect this, go through here, and then connect it all the way down here. So here, we set the world rotation by using the player controller is control rotation. And that's it for the rotation, because uh, you don't have to clamp it or anything. We have it all set up inside the PCM, which I named PCM. Uh, camera height controller but just go into if you the values we set here with the pitch the min max values this is gonna pretty much uh, handle all the clamping so all you have to do is here uh, set and get the spring arm set the world ro rotation and the rotation it takes in is going to be the controllers control rotation And here we have the follow character. Uh, we're going to get the mesh's world location. So we're going to, to be doing a line trace to check if it's on a floor or something, when it's on the floor or not. So here you can see uh, when it's on the floor, we want it to follow it on the X and 
y value the horizontal plane right so we need to keep track of it and how we're going to keep track of it is by getting the reference to the character it's following and to the mesh and getting the world location of it as the starting point for the trace and then for the end point of the trace we just uh, get a value from floor check distance my, uh, which is going to be 50 and then we're going to be shooting a line trace underneath the floor I all underneath uh, the foot of the character so to say and then we're going to ignore the follow character the character we're, we're controlling so right now we don't have a debug so we'll just turn on the debug just to check it out so if we play here you can see this is what it's doing that's the line trace so we check it's so the camera moves around and gets the impact point. We need it to check. Oh, I oh, so I misexplained. I made a mistake. It's not the to check the X, Y values or whatever. We're using this to check if it's uh, impacting on something or not on the floor. So basically, if it's landing on the floor or not. Uh, I did think of maybe using just a simple is falling check or something like that from the character, but. I think to have more control, it's better to have a custom line tracing system. So, this is it. And then after you've done the line trace, if something's hit, we set the impact point to a variable called last impact point uh, vector. And if it's not, we don't do anything, as for now. And then after we set the last impact point value, we interpolate this actor's location uh, from the its last tick location to the last impact point location. Then delta time is going to be get rolled to delta seconds, and enter speed is going to be uh, you know whatever value you want to put it in, put into. Uh, I'm just I'm just using five for both of the side. Uh, just this one. So set actor location. And the new location is going to take a value uh, taken v inter 2 and then this is going to be from the current will be get actor location target will be last impact po impact point and the delta time will be get all the delta seconds you can just copy paste this over here and then just for the target you want to uh, switch it up to follow characters uh, x y value and the last impact points z value so what this does is when the character is jumping over areas where so i have a double double jump set set here so don't worry about that so um well what i wanted to do in this system was while it's jumping over uh ledges or like gaps we want the camera to kind of keep uh its position at the same level of the last platform it jumped over right so in here if it goes over here uh, on this half height platform it's going to adjust its uh, z value to this then when it's jumping it's going to keep that value to make this a bit more visually easy to understand we'll just i'll just show you with a show debug sphere uh, we're going to get this value quickly do something with it uh i think that's just fine copy this here so here we'll see it's easier to see what i'm trying to uh do this is where the actor is at this uh each frame in the white circle you see over there so when it's jumping you can see that it's trying to keep level of the last uh heights of the platform you jump from oops uh, it's kind of hard to jump around in wireframe mode but here we want it to stay at the height level of where it last jumped to so that's why we uh, i added all of this system here we don't need this so that's it for the camera uh the camera actor this is everything and these values you can just set it to whatever you want to uh this you don't uh this isn't for anything to manipulate uh you just 
for check distance, you can just use this. That's it for the camera actor. And then inside the character. Uh, yeah, the spring arm. So if you have a default third person character set up, it's going to have a spring arm and camera boom. Spring arm component called camera boom and a camera called, I think, follow camera attached to it. You don't need them, just uh, get rid of them. Um, here, so the thing is, you need to set the camera actor you just created here as the view target. So what I have in my scenario is uh, on event possessed, I get the actor of class, the camera uh, actor I created. And if it's valid, I set a reference to it. Uh, I have a reference here called the camera. I'm going to set the value of this uh, variable to that in the act in the world and then i'm going to set the view target with it with my controller and then if you remember there's a camera there's a follow character variable inside of the bp camera so we set the value of the follow character to this camera as self uh, of this character uh, you're trying to use with this camera system and then when it's on possessed we just uh get rid of the reference value, dereference it. So here, uh, if you're using the default third person character, you have this all set up for you. Ignore this, this is just for the double, double jump. No need to worry about this. What you need to worry about here is this. So it's going to be cast to player controller. You want to cast it to the controller you created. And then it's going to be adding the mapping and uh, mapping context to the controller that you've created. And after you've done everything here, I think it should work. I do have the just for the video. I have something to possess from the default character to the uh, platform cam character. Yeah, so. This doesn't matter that much. Yeah, but if you're watching this, I'm guessing you have some knowledge of blueprints already. So my you would get the idea that you understand this part, right? So you need to set the camera as the view target or else it's not going to be uh the gameplay camera wouldn't be in the perspective of the camera that we just created. Um, so yeah, I hope this helps. This it does. So depending on your game, this might be required. This might be not. Depending on some games, uh, it might be a feature you might want to look into when you're creating your cameras. Um, I hope it helped and. Uh, I hope you all have a great day and oh and also obviously like I always want to uh, men mention any feedback uh, is welcome any comments are very helpful for me um, and uh, I'm looking forward to hearing out anything uh, you'd like to share thank you